Hey friends, happy Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I hope that you are winding down a little bit and getting ready to take some time off for Thanksgiving. I was gonna call it Turkey Day, but my older son is now more or less a vegetarian, so it's shifting my thinking. And uh, Aaron Coles, who's very active in our community, has been educating me about the wonders of vegan and vegetarian living. Hi Kelly, welcome. Hey Winnie, can't wait to bring you on. We have a guest today, and in a few minutes she'll be coming on. She is a very talented photographer based in Brooklyn, New York, Winnie Lau. She's also a graduate of Million Dollar Women Masterclass, and we just did a photo shoot together, and I learned so much from her. I love my new photo photos that we did, and I thought I would have her come on and share some of her expertise about product photography, which is one of her specialties, and portraiture. I know that all of us right now are thinking about how can we ramp up our marketing online since that's where everybody's finding us. And a big piece of that is the photos you have of yourself on your website. Do they communicate what your brand is all about? Do you seem approachable? Have you thought about your personal brand, your company brand? Are they one in the same? Do you need two different sets of photography, one for your personal brand and one for your product or service that you sell? These are all questions everyone's asking or should be asking if they're not, and we are lucky enough to have an expert come help us through them. So Winnie, can't wait to have you on. But before I do, um, I always like to share a go big tip. And today it is about gratitude, not surprisingly, since we have Thanksgiving tomorrow. I am a total gratitude junkie, and I spend all year finding ways to ramp up the gratitude. If you're on my newsletter list, today's email that I sent out was called how to, what do we call it? How to, oh, I can't remember what we called it, but it was something about ramping up the gratitude, turn up the gratitude or something like that. And um, if you're not on my newsletter list, I'd love you to be. You can just go to juliapimsler.com and fill out, you know, the, add your email. I send out newsletters about issues that affect women scaling up their businesses. You'll be the first to know when our programs are enrolling and all kinds of other special opportunities like early access to the Million Dollar Women's Summit. We have our fifth annual coming up in April, can't wait. But um, today I wanted to share a, a tip that's really about ramping up the gratitude because when you are a small business owner, it's so easy to get distracted by all the things that aren't working in your business and to focus on you know, how you wish you had more clients or you wish you were further along or you wish you had more help or you wish you'd already redone your website, right? And so in order not to get stuck there because that brings up a lot of negative energy that doesn't help you to grow your business and find new customers and clients and, and do the kind of things you need to do to grow your business, it's really important to have a gratitude practice. And what that means is something you do on a regular basis that keeps you in touch with the things that you're grateful for. So a lot of women in our community keep a gratitude journal and I keep one and so I'm gonna just share mine today. So this is my gratitude journal. It's a big fat book. I've actually been keeping it since 2018. I opened it up, it's been two years worth. And just about every night I write in it seven to 10 things that I'm grateful for. It really takes five minutes, but it allows you to end every day on a note of excitement, hope, it can be little tiny things. I just opened a random page today. Here's from 12 to 2019. Eating cereal with Emmett last night. That's my older son. We wound up like staying up late eating, you know, a 10 o'clock snack together. Maybe it was 11, I can't remember. So that was number one. Uh, two, great brainstorming session with my team. Three, watching big snowflakes outside my window. Four, hope about a publisher. That was before I found my publisher for my new book. Uh, five, Adrian's sweet face. That's my younger son. Uh, six, reading books I love. So just little things, right? But it gets you refocused on all the bounty that is in your life right now. Because even though we all have things we haven't achieved yet and you know, new clients we haven't won and revenue levels we haven't gotten to, by staying focused on the things that are working, you actually attract more good things and you stay in that positive state that is needed to find new opportunities, to build new partnerships, and to grow your business. So my go big tip today is ramp up the gratitude, and you'll see how that will help you stay not only emotionally and mentally fit, but it will also help you grow your business.
So with that being said, I am so excited to bring on Winnie and to learn from her again. I learned from you so much when we did our photo shoot. So here we go. Winnie Lau, welcome to CEO Check-In. Just waiting on the technology. Hey, hey. Caitlin. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Winnie. Hey. Hi, Hi. Julia. How Thanks. are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I feel like we're all prepping for tomorrow and I got know, it. Right? Yeah, I have some last minute grocery shoppings after the live and then we're ready. Well, it's just me and my boyfriend, it's just two of us. But. Oh, nice. Are you doing the cooking? Who's, who's doing the, the cooking? Um, he's going to do all the cooking. Awesome. Even better. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna do you have make, like one um, dish you make or something? Well, um, this year is our first year spending it together. And he's going to make sweet potato casserole, if I'm correct. I do the oh. eating. I don't do the planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Lucky you. That sounds really fun. And do you usually see family? Is this like a, a pandemic different thing? Or is this how you usually do it? You said it's no, the no, I think part of um, our family cultures, we don't really celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, my, fa my, fam my parents are immigrants, so they didn't really quite understand what Thanksgiving is. Um, but personally, for me, it's like taking a day to really just kind of like, like, like you kind of mentioned, sense of gratitude to everything that happened this year. Um, I reach out to some friends just to like thank them for all their help. And like, that's my version of Thanksgiving. I love that. <laughs> that's great. And I'm sure they're so happy to hear from you when you do that. That's very much in the spirit, right? It's not just yeah. about stuffing your face so much that you can't even get up from the table, which is how a lot of Americans spend Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that you're doing the actual thanking people apart. Um, <laughs> And Winnie, I'd love you to share a little bit about how you started your business and tell your story a little bit. And then I have some questions that actually come from women in our community. I've been doing oh, yeah. some homework before having you on and finding out what do people want to know. So I'm excited to ask you my questions. But yeah, you share a little bit. How did you come to have your own photography business here in New York City? Yeah, um, a little about myself. I um, born and raised in New York. And it's so funny because photography is not my first career. It's actually my second career. Um, my first career is um, as an engineer, but I didn't love it. But I love being a photographer, um, just because of the craft around it, the technical um, ideas behind it, but as well as just connecting with so many amazing women entrepreneurs, whether they're providing a service or a product, it's probably the most fulfilling aspect of what I do as a photographer. So even as you mentioned, I focus a lot on portraiture, just like what we did a couple of weeks ago. Yes, it and was so fun. Thank that you. Was so, and it was the coldest day. Um, I know, right? It it's so like, fun. we have to pretend like, oh, I'm just here hanging out in the park, but I'm freezing, so yeah. giving my coat back. <laughs> you did so well. So good. Thank you. Um, you, were, you were a good coach. Um, well, you know, that's this engineer thing, though. This is so interesting. And, and do you feel like you apply any of that engineer background to, to your photography work? Oh, definitely. Not more of like the technical engineering, but the etiquette behind corporate, meaning replying back to emails, um, um, just even like the way language is written on emails, just personality, um, just personal development through going through years of corporate. So I think that is what was really helpful. From well, you mentioned background. you studied engineering, but then so you actually worked in yeah. a corporation. Oh, yeah, I did for position? a couple of years. That's so interesting. Uh, I was a traffic engineer. So specifically kind of the person who does all, everyone's going to hate me, the one who does all the work zone plans. <laughs> So all the barriers you have to go through, as well as lighting changes. So that like so how long the red, yellow. Yeah, like someone does all the math behind that to maximize and like, um, to maximize the network. And that yes. is really cool. Well, how did your parents feel about it? I have to ask when you changed from Ooh. like engineering to entrepreneur. That was a tough battle because um, I, I love my parents because they support no matter whatever I did, as long as I'm happy. But they were very concerned about what that looked like financially. And I'm sure a lot of people with immigrant parents understand this. Um, and it really took me a couple of years to really warm them up to the idea and just show receipts to them like, I'm doing well. I'm doing OK. <laughs> I'm happy. And I'm not going to be moving back home and living in the basement, I promise. <laughs> 
that's not happening. <laughs> well, yeah, and you've been so successful in part because you are so talented, which I knew before we worked together, but even more so now that we have worked together. But maybe you could share a little bit about what was troubling you about the business when you decided to join Masterclass, because I think a lot of people could relate to the position you were in of like, I love what I do, but wow, now I'm working really hard. So maybe just uh, share yeah. a little of that if you could. Yeah, looking back, there are a lot of things I realized that um, I really, I didn't have a fine focus of what I wanted to do. So that was A, like I was doing a million other things and I realized I need a focus. So that's one thing. And second thing was I, I was growing and I needed a way to like stop burnout and definitely taking master class helped me realize like ways that I can do that. As you know, I was very keen on getting an assistant. And then the last thing um, was just kind of realize I, I know nothing about marketing. So um, it was so helpful taking masterclass to learn about marketing, whether it was SEO or like newsletters, or I didn't do any of that before. So I'm so thrilled. That's great to hear. And I know <laughs> one thing that really stayed with me was, was when you shared that, you know, your boyfriend had started saying like, wow, you're just working all the time. Like, tell yeah. us a little bit about that, how that felt. Because I think a lot of people could relate to that. Yeah, I was just, my, my boyfriend had really nervous. We lived together and he never really said anything about my workload until one day, a couple months ago, he's like, wow, you're working a lot. You're staying up really late. I feel bad. I should be working hard. I was like, no, don't feel bad. But he noticed that I was really stressed. So I, it was definitely, I had to change something in my lifestyle. Well, and it's interesting because we find in Million Dollar Women that a lot of women don't come to us and you know, they don't have to come to us. They can take some other program, but don't get to that place where they're like, I need to make a change until something happens. Right. Like, I think that was kind of, was that your aha moment where you're like, wait, I think it was another way of doing this. Definitely, definitely was a big aha moment. <laughs> well, we're so glad that you came to us. I think Erin introduced us, right? Erin Carlos. Yeah. I referenced earlier. She's so awesome. She has her own live show now. People should go watch her show too on Friday afternoons, right? Yes. <laughs> to be a freelancer, inter interviewing freelancers. Um, but yes, so what I'd love to hear about now is what do you think entrepreneurs should be thinking about in terms of improving the way their websites look because now you know our websites and our social media are our calling card right you used to meet people in person get introduced now it's like everything's online mm -hmm. what are some of the things you're seeing like what are some tips that you could give that you think could be helpful for people who are wanting to yeah i mean i help a lot of entrepreneurs through um what to look for when they're starting to gather photos, whether it's for product photography or for portraiture. One thing I always suggest my clients to do is hop on Pinterest or go on someone else's website and look at what other people are doing that makes sense for your targeted audience. So um, it's all about who your who your targeted audience is. So like if your target audience is a, a millennial like me, then you want to find a company inspiration on Pinterest um, that aligns with that and see what they're doing. Pull those images, pull those images and pull it all on a mood board. And that's kind of a, a great tip that I like to give people to just get their brain starting on like what the visuals might look like. And then because that's what they can share with you, right? The yeah, exactly. Say, hey, yeah. This is what I'm going for. Yeah, put it on Pinterest, put it on a Google Doc, like either way it works for me at least. Um, I don't know about other photographers, but it's just a way to visualize everything because I feel like I'm a very visual person and a lot of my entrepreneurs are too. Um, especially like you mentioned, now that everything's digitally and uh, it is hard and, and a website is almost like the first impression. You open someone's website and it's the first thing you see, you and that 60 seconds impressions in through photos most of the time is you want to make sure that they get who your brand is. They get what what they're looking at. Well, let's break that down for people mm -hmm. a minute because, you know, what are some of the things one decides in 15 seconds looking at a website? I mean, I can think of some. I'd love to hear what you think. Like, one, is this person approachable, right? Yes. Two, is this a luxury brand or is this like a practical brand? You know, three, uh, do I feel like this is a, a party I'd want to be at, right? Yes. What other kind of things do you think that they, they decide like within 15 seconds of looking at the website? Yeah, it's like, is this something that I would be interested in? Like, is this aligned with what I'm interested in? Like, I feel like whether it's opening someone's Instagram or website, in that 60 seconds, you can get a full idea of what you're looking at. And many times I've done that where I, before I hop on a call with a client, I go on their Instagram, and I go on their website to see what they already have. Um, and I can already kind of tell, like, there's some, like, I can already tell impressions of who your clientele is. 
and who you are just based on photos and how I can help update their photos. Well, that so. reminds me of a question that one of the members of our community asked. So mm -hmm. Kelly, who has an event planning business, you mm -hmm. know, she has a website where she has like one or two pictures of herself on the website that her friend took and they're good pictures, but she's wondering, well, how do I know when I'm ready, when it's the right time to invest in an actual photo shoot and have, you know, six or seven pictures or, or, you know, some more lifestyle shots of me. Like, how do you know when you're ready to make that transition? Ooh, that is a very good question about timing when. Um, I really think it's not in the, like the launch, not in the beginning of like when you're still getting everything together, but it's to the point when you already have a small audience and you kind of know the direction of where you want to go to. Mm -hmm. that's when you hire a photographer because really it's an investment. It's an investment. These photos could be used for years to come um, unless you want to update it for press for whatever you may need. These are specific to portraitures, but that's when you need um, photos for portraits, at least, at least headshots that you want to be able to send to press. But when it comes to product photography, um, I believe that once you have, once you're in rendering phase, like post rendering and you already have these sample, that's when you should hire a photographer because that's when you really want to get the images ready so you can post on your e-commerce site, Shopify, website. Can you, you give us an example of a client you worked with who like made that decision and like what did it do for them? Is, does anybody jump to mind any of your product, Ooh, product God. entrepreneurs you worked with? Yeah, I think a lot of times I feel like the best sweet spot, I, I sometimes I always recommend going even on a discovery call with your with potential photographers to get an idea of when um, and their process. Mm. So it's kind of important. Um, for example, I have a client that reached out to me early on in her like before she even had the product like a physical product, but she really wanted to know when how long this process may take. So just for example, for me, it takes about three weeks from start to end to get your photos. So I always recommend that once you get your sample, allocate about three weeks before you want to launch on your website. So that's kind of a good timing to kind of get your photos. So then well, by the way, being on the other end of that, I see your engineering <laughs> side because you were like super organized. You're like, here are all the low res, now big yes. favorites, now yes. you know, the, the ones you need quick turnaround. It was like very well organized. So thank you. For yes, that. yes, yes, yes. It's like definitely the engineering mindset of it all. But like I it love comes it. with the planning phase for me and it makes sense for you too because you want to know when you're going to get your images. But I can um, see so a product company having a launch and not thinking, Yes. You're fully, oh, wait, I have to take these photos like four weeks before, not like the week before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, exactly. And then to allocate that time because things move really fast. But in order to have good photography, I always recommend the month before. Well, and I love kind of before and after stories. So like, can you think of, a, of someone who came to you with a product where when you first looked at your website, you're like, yeah, this looks okay, but we're going to make this look like 20 times better. And then you did the shoot and they put up the new pictures. Like, I know I'm already feeling like that about the pictures you took for me. Like, mm -hmm. I'm already like, team, stop using the old pictures. I hate all the old pictures now. <laughs> I only want the new pictures. <laughs> well, so, a good example is yeah. a photo shoot that I just did with Aaliyah. Um, for, oh, there we go. Who's also for Ally Shoes. Yeah, 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 for Ally yes. Yeah, we did. Um, she was a model and a stylist. She's amazing. Um, yeah. And for Ally And it's her birthday. Happy Birthday. Oh my God. Yes, happy birthday. <laughs> I wish happy birthday later. But, um, we did a photo shoot for Alex Shoes. And what's great about that was that um, there's just a lot of inconsistencies with their photos early on because they used so many different photographers. So here I came in mm. and was like, no, we're just going to streamline everything. Um, and I'm going to make sure I use the same background for all your photos. We're going to get the same, um, we're going to get the same vibe for all your photos. And that's where I came in to like, kind of like unify everything a little bit. Um, I love so, that. So that really elevates the look so that when it really does, it lands really on does. their website, are they implemented or not yet? They haven't. Yes, they them. are. They're they there. are. Oh, great. Yes. We'll have to go take a look. So it's Ally <laughs> Shoes, right? Another woman yes. entrepreneur. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Yes. A-L-L-Y. <laughs> Shoes.com. Yeah. Um, I think it's nyc.com. Okay. So yeah. so now when someone lands on the site, it all looks very uniform, very classy, mm -hmm. very pro, right? And just new photography can mm -hmm. do that for a brand. That's uh, really important. Exactly. 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 Like all that is so important, especially consistency. Um, um, and I think part of it comes with creating that mood board so that you can present to your photographers and also seeing the photographers work to make sure that their photos that they've created in the past is in line with what you want. So I think that's really important. 
I like that. <laughs> that's great. And so what if someone has a services business, not a product business? For product mm -hmm. businesses, of course, that's going to be in their budget, right? There's going to be a line item of like, take pictures of the product. But if you have a services business like Kelly with the events business, mm -hmm. um, how do people know that this is going to be like something that's going to really pay off for them? Like, have you had a client where they changed their photography and then it boosted their confidence, they raised their prices or like, did it, has anything like that ever happened? Yeah, um, I can't say necessarily um, in terms of the results, but what I can tell is the importance of having updated photography, because um, I personally have gone through this where I had a headshot on my Instagram, and it was a picture of me without glasses, and I had short hair. And I remember going to a photo shoot, and my client couldn't find me, because she's like, she's looking for a girl with no glasses. Oh my god! And short hair, and I have long hair, and I have glasses. So just be, just through that, the value of just having updated um, headshots is so important. And it sends a message, right? It shows mm -hmm. like you're keeping current, you know, styles change, fashion change, earrings mm -hmm. change, it all changes, right? So yeah. if you have something that looks kind of three years old, that's going to communicate pretty loudly to people. Yep, yep, exactly. And then let's I mean, also throw in the pandemic. I do think there's been a bit of a shift. I know that in the coaching world, we talk about how people want coaches now who are more approachable because mm -hmm. while before it might've been like, here I am in my suit. Like I'm so corporate, I'm going to help you. Right. But now it's like, no, you know what? We're all home. <laughs> we got like our kids running around. Like I think there's a realness factor now yeah. that needs to also be reflected yeah. in the photos. I remember even when you and I did our shoot. We were we talking. That, yeah. Right? We definitely we're talked not. about that. And a lot of the photos that I see now that's really popularized and um, is, is, is more on trend, I guess, is lifestyle photos, meaning you are in your element and um, the photographer's capturing you in your element. And that's what we did. You know, I captured you. I know. <laughs> I loved outside. it. It was so fun. But the truth is if people come to your website and they see you in an environment that is just not at all an option right now it's like immediately they're thinking okay well that's dated and also if you have a services business you want people to come and imagine being your client yes. right but if the yes. scene that's being portrayed is something that's not even possible right now then you're making it harder really for your client to imagine working with you i would think yes no exactly and even through instagram i go on someone's instagram i want to be able to see someone that i can relate to that i can work with and it's First impressions, that 60 seconds, like we talked about. <laughs> I love it. Okay, photography, do's and don'ts. <laughs> do's and don'ts. So someone is like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm going to have a photo shoot. What are some, just like a couple of do's and don'ts if you're going to have that photo shoot? Okay, do's, I, I always recommend getting a hairstylist and makeup artist. I think a lot of people, or if you're really good at doing yourself, do yourself, but I always recommend getting um, your hair done a little bit, not too much, um, just so it doesn't, it still looks true to you, but um, elevated, as well as makeup, just enhancing certain features, because in photos, it just looks better, it just brightens it up, everything a little bit. And, the, and then um, you have that confidence, right? And you also yes. have started your day like, oh, does this look good? Does this not look good, right? Someone yes. else is not. <laughs> yeah. And another do is please try on the clothing before the photo shoot. I've had some photo shoots where a client just like, I think this will fit me. Where's the outfit? Doesn't look very good. Um, and that's half and, it, and it's an unfortunate waste of time. So please yeah, try on time. your outfits. before. That's a good shoot. one. Yeah, Leah came over, we picked all my outfits because she, you know, helps me with my styling. And it was like, so yeah. great to just have those ready to go. We just powered through them. Remember? No, exactly. Yeah. And then we made some like alternatives depending on like what was happening but you had those base it wasn't like okay oh, okay Winnie's here let me grab a shirt like you know no it's not nothing like that um and then don't so I guess that falls into don't right what about like <laughs> outdoor versus indoor if people are wondering like should I do I have to do outdoor shots can I just do it all indoors no. what's your sense about that no I could definitely do um indoor shots if you prefer um outdoor shots if you prefer there's really no strong preference at the end of the day, it all aligns to what your brand is saying. If you are a virtual company, um, meaning like, let's say you're a fitness instructor, but you're all virtual now, it does not make any sense to do photos outside because you're going to be inside. Um, but then all at the same time, if you are kind of, um, if you are very influential and you just need photos to sell, you can definitely do it outside. There's no well, question. Like I'm thinking of do. Kelly, right? The event. Yeah, yeah, her. yeah. She has this, she has a gorgeous dog and she loves to walk her dog in the park. I would think if she were to do a photo shoot, that could be like one of the photos, right? And like make her more and approachable. And it makes her so much more approachable. Even though that photo might be a little casual, 
it could be used on your Instagram, but doesn't necessarily need to be used on your website. So, but like you can kind of pull from elements of your real life into your photo shoot too. So it could be a little bit of outdoors. At the end of the day, I always recommend a client think about what is that you want to portray, write it out. And then those are kind of the key points you want to highlight for a photo shoot. I love that. And how often should people do those shoots? Like, I mean, I do mine once every maybe year and a half or so. Is there a frequency you recommend? I really believe if um, I recommend my clients, if it's just for headshots, I recommend that same as you a year, year and a half is a good time. But if you are constantly on Instagram, and you really want elevated photos, I recommend every season, just because then for photos, you'll have an up, especially New York, where like summer looks different than fall, then it looks different than that's a really, really good point. I don't know if you noticed, we use one of your photos for my Instagram main photo where I'm holding oh, the coffee. So yes, good. and I'm walking. But look, I have a coat on and I'm drinking coffee, right? So that's very winter, right? That's very fall mm -hmm. and winter. If you put that, that up in the middle of July, it would like just it look wouldn't weird. Make sense. Yeah, right. exactly. So, um, so I always recommend seasonal if you can, or maybe twice a year. So um, it really depends on someone's budget well, and, and like again, the comfortability. And again, layering in the pandemic, right? I feel like we're going through these photos much faster. Funny enough, I had done a photo shoot, I don't know, just a few months before the pandemic. It hasn't even been a full year. You know, one, I just thought you were super talented and I wanted to work with you. So I was like, let's speed this up. But also, um, I felt like we just moved through all my photos because ever since the pandemic, yeah. right, we're not doing live events. There's nothing else to photograph. So I don't know if other people are having that experience, but I suspect that's part of why you've been so busy. I know it's been a very busy time. Yeah, for you. yeah. People are like, I you make such a good point. You make such a good point about that. I, I didn't even think of that too. Um, and yeah, a lot of my clients, they keep a library of images that they could just pull from. You know, they don't need to hire me every week. No, just pull your images that we've kind of collected and we kind of gathered together. Right, but once you've moved through them like three different times, right? it's like, okay, you get sick of them. I get sick of them. <laughs> I want new ones. That did make me think of another question someone had. Oh, it was about how do you keep your photography fresh on your website if there are no events? because many of us were used to here's this cool event we had here's another cool event we had mm -hmm. are you seeing any best practices around that around people finding creative ways to add new cool content to their website even if it's not from an actual event well I think a lot of people instead of um so you have photos of yourself that you can use that's always a great way to kind of pivot but also stock photography um instead of having a whole new photo shoot maybe they have stock photography that they can pull from for their blogs that you might talk about more and especially now that we're not doing any in-person events um i think a lot of people are tapping into more video and more blog content so i think that's really important just to pull from stock photography it's always accessible so you can always access it there too um, is there anything noticed... to be done with those photos of all the little squares of the people in zoom we always wonder like can we post another one of these they're so boring i i i feel like <laughs> after the fourth time it gets a little repetitive and people get it <laughs> right but i think key key photos that i've been getting a lot for my clients are them on their phone and them on their laptop and oh. i think that's important because it showcases that well i am i know how to use technology and i can be easily reached by phone or or my laptop and I think that's been important to show too. I love that and the truth is we were talking before about when you land on someone's website or you go to their social media you kind of want to see your interests or values mirrored back to you mm -hmm. and I do think there's like a subconscious thing if you go to someone's website or, or social media right now and they're like on the phone having fun or like on their laptop like you know leading a, a zoom thing you're kind of like oh that's like me that's what I'm doing all day long Right, mm -hmm. and there's like a little bit of a synergy thing there. Where if you go to their website and every picture is of them in front of you know a hundred people, you're like, well, that's not happening right now. When was that even taken? Not right? happening. It's just like, right, it leads to a whole series of thoughts that are not helpful in terms of pulling in your client or customer. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, I completely agree. And it's also thinking that. Just like you mentioned, the website's just not updated. Um, it's not updated. Like you're almost wondering, like, okay, are you still around? Um, are you? And unfortunately, a lot of people just didn't um, make it through the pandemic, or we're still in the pandemic. But well, and yeah, a lot so, of the yeah. women who called us during the pandemic, our coaching clients, or just women who wanted extra help, you know, we said to all of them, put a message on your website that says, we are still open for business, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not really sure. I mean, I know here in New York, when I want to, you know, go to a restaurant or something, I go to their website. And if you can't tell right away, like, 
yeah, we're still operating, right? You might just move on to the next one. Yeah, I agree. That's really important. That was such a good note. I think I did that for myself too. <laughs> oh, good. A little message, a little COVID yeah. message. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, so before we wrap up, I'd love you to say how people can find you. Where do you like to post to social media? What are some, some places people can find you if they want to learn more, Winnie? Yeah, I, I'm not on Instagram as much right now, but the best way to reach me is just through my email or through my website. You can see more of my work at www.winilao.com. And then as well as um, email me, I can be reached via email and shoot me an email. Oh, awesome. And so we, what, would you mind putting your email here in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to write it? Okay, I can write yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Throw it in the chat. And um, I think that your Instagram handle is just at Winnie Lau, or is it at Winnie Lau Photography? I can't remember. Winnie Lau Photos. Winnie Lau Photos. Okay. Yes. And I know that you also do have a specialization. You don't only work with women entrepreneurs, but you do work with a lot of women entrepreneurs. I I've do, seen I women do. chopping up things in their kitchen, doing yoga. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are, what are some of the kinds of businesses you've worked with, just to give people an idea? Um, I, I definitely pr prefer working with women entrepreneurs. Um, and, but that could be, and I, but I've worked with bigger corporate companies where many ladies lead the marketing team. And I feel very honored to work with so many great small and big brands, um, through that. And it includes service-based companies as well as product-based companies. So that's kind of in line with, um, what I do, but I met Erin because, um, we did photos for Met Players. Yeah. <laughs> I love Met Players. They're so talented. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, they're so good. Yeah, yeah, she's got great photography, actually. I always love her photography. Oh, my yeah. Her brother does yeah. such a good job. I think her brother does a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's great you did the Met Player stuff. Well, listen, I'm so happy you stopped in here the day before Thanksgiving. I know it's a busy day, you know, closing everything down before we take the break. So thank you for taking some time. And Thanks thank you so much me. for helping with my photos because I love them. Yes. I'm using one for my holiday card, personal holiday card, professional holiday card. So um, super <laughs> grateful, love working with you and also seeing your business grow. Congratulations on having two assistants now and more business than you know what to do with. This is oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Julia, for having me today. Have a great Thanksgiving. My pleasure. You too. Bye, Winnie. Thanks for coming. Bye. 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 I love when women from Masterclass can also help other women in the community. You know, we hired Winnie, other women in our community have hired Winnie to help her with their photos. Interestingly, I was telling her that she was my first female photographer for my headshots. I've always had guys. They've done a great job. But funny enough, they didn't know some subtle things that I think as women we have to pay attention to when we're doing photography for our websites. Like, for instance... Um, I'll just close out on this. I know we need to go over time, but this was kind of an important thing that I learned a while ago, whereas when you're a woman and you're doing headshots, you don't want to have a tilt like this or like this. It sort of is very unempowering to have that tilt. And I noticed that all these male photographers I had, they didn't know that. They didn't pay any attention to that. I might have told them maybe they noticed or didn't notice but Winnie I told her right at the beginning like I don't want that head, to, head tilt if you see me doing that head tilt just say tilt and I'll stop it and she was so on it all day and as a result I can keep so many more of my photos whereas on prior photo shoots I did have to get rid of a lot of them because it just it didn't look good so look out for that head tilt you'll see what I'm talking about if you if you compare photos of women you are uh, following on social media you'll see very few of the women who are running big multi-million dollar businesses are taking pictures that look like this. I like this. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. I am super grateful for you being in my community. I wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. I'm going to get to see my mom tomorrow in a social distancing safe way and then cook a big Thanksgiving meal here. The first turkey I've cooked in a while. My mom always does it for my boys, my brother, and uh, we're going to be safe, but also with family. And I hope that is what you're going to be doing too. Have a wonderful holiday. Great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first CEO check-in, you can see prior guests and some live coaching that I do. Just go to the old CEO check-ins on Instagram live TV, or I also post them on my YouTube channel, Julia Pimsler Coach. Enjoy your Thanksgiving and ramp up the gratitudes. Bye.